Howdy, this is Jeff. I'm going to show you everything that Advanced Polygon Collider can do for you. Let's go ahead and get started. When you uh, load the demo scene, that'll give you the uh, information you need on how all of this works. The gist of it is, is you create sprites, add them to your scene, and then add the Advanced Polygon Collider script, which is in the script folder here. Once you've done that, you'll see that if you hadn't already added a sprite renderer and a Polygon Collider 2D, that those will be added for you as they are required by this Advanced Polygon Collider script to work. It contains a number of sliders, some of which you can leave alone. The hall tolerance is how closely it tries to match the edges. Generally, I just leave that at 2. Alpha tolerance 0 0.4, that means the bottom 40% pixels of those alpha values closer to zero will be counted as transparent and be candidates for edges. The, really the, per, the slider you'll be using the most is the distance threshold, so let's zoom in on this asteroid and see how this works. As the distance threshold approaches zero, that means less and less consolidation will be happening on your vertices. Any vertices with a distance less than this value will get consolidated. So let's show you how this works as you drag the slider up. As that slider gets bigger, vertices with distances higher and higher will be consolidated, and it goes up to a max of 64. Now obviously for this sprite, that's too much, so we dial it down. I believe I had it at 8, which is pretty darn close. There's a tiny bit of asteroid that's not covered. If you wanted that to be covered, you could go down a little bit more uh, with a distance threshold of 5. You pretty much got a perfect contour. There's a tiny bit of pixels poking out, but nothing that would probably affect your game. And you've got 11 vertices versus what the Unity Polygon Collider 2D defaulted to, which I don't even know. I think it was even more than the 33 vertices that it has right there. So use this slider to very quickly reduce your vertices in the editor and then it'll be ready for your game using a lot less CPU and memory and calculations to make your physics work. Okay, let's move on. Decompose, you'll generally want to leave that off. Uh, this will, if you turn it on, make all the polygons convex. Now Unity, the Polygon Collider 2D, already does this, so generally you can leave that off. In the future, I'm hoping Unity will have a parameter to their Polygon Collider that says, hey, my points are already convex, you don't need to run that algorithm. But for now, Unity always runs the algorithm, so you can just leave that off for now. Detect Islands allows you to have multiple shapes in a single sprite. You'll see these islands right here there's two shapes. If I uncheck detect islands it only detects the one shape. So leave detect islands off unless you have multiple pieces. I believe the default value is on but you can turn that off if you know you will have a single shape. Detect holes you can probably leave that off unless for some reason you have a giant sprite with a hole in the middle that the player can move around inside of. If that's the case then you'll want to have detect holes turned on. Run in play mode, you'll generally want to leave that off unless you are changing the sprite at runtime. And there's a few cases where that might happen, like in animation. So let's show you an example of this animated cougar. You can see that this cougar has an animator attached to it. So during the play, when I press play, this cougar is going to animate, which means the sprite will be changing. Now the Advanced Polygon Collider can handle this easily using the cache to speed things up. I've already cached eight elements for each frame of the cougar. Now during, during the editing mode, if you've turned on Use Cache, you'll notice that those get populated. If I turn that off, the cache gets wiped out, but it's super easy to repopulate. So if I turn that back on and I go to Animation, and I play the animation. Watch how the cache gets populated as the cougar goes through its animations. See this here? The cache has been repopulated. As the sprite got changed in the editor, this script was able to detect this and immediately create cache elements 
so that during runtime it doesn't have to do the expensive calculations for the pixels. Okay, <clears throat> let's go ahead and run this scene and you can see how all of this works. It's going to be quite funny. There's the cougar animating. Let's select the polygon collider so you can see that he's getting his polygons updated in real time as his paws move you can see that the polygon edges get updated and you don't have to worry about that the script takes care of it if you change that sprite it'll do the right thing and if you've turned on the cache and the sprites were already cached then you'll have excellent performance and even if it has to calculate using the alpha values and the cache is turned on it will still only have to cache calculate it once so the performance should be very excellent for you uh, okay let's stop that <clears throat> all right so that's basically all that this script can do for you uh, it's quite powerful but yet very simple so i hope that you uh, enjoy using this please send me any feedback to uh, support at digitalruby.com and have fun with your new simplified polygon script bye